Hey everyone, Kilo India 5, India, Julia Bravo here, quick video um, about my true SDX. My true SDX. Uh, so, I'm a big QRP guy and uh, I like doing uh, POTA activations, that's kind of my, my, my thing. Um, I usually use my G90, uh, which is great, but I got this radio, gosh, I don't know, uh, almost a year ago now. And I got it as a kit because I'm no good with soldering stuff generally. <laughs> At least small, like, SMD stuff and, and whatnot. So I thought, just go ahead and get the kit. Anyway, um, so I got this. Didn't really use it much. Hooked up to my antennas um, here at the house. And um, I noticed the power went from, you know, putting out 5, 6 watts or so um, to, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 based on the, the meter up here. So I hooked up my dummy load with a watt meter on it, and uh, same thing, it didn't, needle didn't even move on low power. So I basically gave up on it, and I put it in a box, um, or in a bag, for, gosh, I don't know, six months, eight months, something like that. And I recently went back to it because I'm hopefully going to start doing, or we're doing a little bit more traveling as a family now, and this is, I think, perfect to bring with me, uh, bring with us on trips, and do some kind of POTA as we have time. So I have this little um, this old bag here that I have everything I need for a POTA activation. I got NFED halfway for 20 meters, I have a USB cable, um, a 12 volt tool battery, everything like that. Anyway, that'll be a different video. But I wanted to use this, which means I had to get it working. <clears throat> so I started reading online on some forums and uh, came to the conclusion pretty quickly that I fried the vinyls on this. So full disclosure, I am not an electronics engineer, an electrical engineer. I am no kind of engineer. I am a cybersecurity guy. So maybe a cybersecurity engineer, but nah. I, I work with computers. I work with the cloud. That's, that's my thing. So this is all a hobby. This is all fun for me, right? So I had to learn how to do all this. but. Um, uh, I, so this is a low band kit, right? This is a low band board, um, which means that it uses three finals instead of, I think on the classic board and the high bands, I think it uses one. I could be wrong on that. Um, you can look it up and you can see what the board has on it. But you see here, there's one, two, three. Uh, these are BS 170s. Um, <clears throat> so I just went online and I found, I think it was from DigiKey, they had these for sale for, you know, let's say 30, 40 cents a piece, I'm not really sure. So I ordered six of them in case I messed up the first batch somehow. Um, uh, so oh, a word of caution on these, from what I can tell online, some of these that you buy on like, you know, Amazon or eBay or AliExpress, God help you, I guess, uh, some of these have like the pins uh, reversed, like the... Uh, the drain and the source, I guess, sometimes are, are reversed. I'm not sure which pins exactly, but be careful which ones you buy. Uh, since this is, like I said, a, a hobby for me, it's not really like my, my um, you know, skilled profession. I went with something that I knew would be good, so I just went to DigiKey and got legitimate ones. Um, and it worked great. So I, all I did is I just took the, you know, took the True SDX apart, um, took the sandwich apart, flipped it over, I did some tests on these transistors, and so if you don't know how to test um, finals, which I definitely, definitely did not, uh, just have a, uh, a search for how to, search, uh, how to test NPN um, MOSFETs, and it'll tell you exactly how to, how to um, test these guys uh, while they're still on the board, which is what I did. Um, <clears throat> and you can just go to DigiKey and, and find uh, the technical specs on these, the documents, and it'll tell you which one is, um, which pin is what. And so it's, it's pretty simple to test it with just a, uh, a little digital multimeter, or even analog multimeter, no big deal. So I would recommend doing that first. Uh, but, but yeah, basically I uh, desoldered these, put the new ones in very carefully over like I think two days at night when the kids were asleep, and uh, powered it up. And now I'm putting out about eight watts, I think, on 20 meters, which is actually a little bit high. Um, you know, you want to be around, I think, the five to six watt range with these. So I'm gonna have to adjust these uh, these these torres, these windings, which uh, I did before 
when I actually had the finals fried, uh, trying to get more power out of it, because I, I didn't know. I was trying to, you know, see what else I could do, so I hooked this up to the nano VNA, and I was, I was moving these around to see what, what changed, and I don't know what I did. I probably didn't do it very well, um, and so I'm, I'm going to go back and, and uh, reconfigure these to be efficient on the bands and put out the amount of power that I, I, I want to put out, which is about 5 watts for longevity's, you know, sake. But yeah, so basically, you know, if you have a, if you have one of these and you've, you know, used it before, and all of a sudden your power is low, and you've checked, you know, like the, uh, the, was it the PA bias um, max um, in the settings? I don't know which setting that is in here. Actually, let me turn it on really quick. I just have a little battery bank with three 18650s and a really shoddily made connector, that's fine. So, BA... Where is it? I think it's in that... There it is. Oh, PA, excuse me. PA bias, max. Uh, for the BS-170s, uh, you want this at 128. For the other final, I actually don't know, it's on the on um, DL2MAN's website. And I think it actually might be 255. I think, which is the max um, value. Uh, but I, I mess with R shunt, I mess with all sorts of stuff. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, basically make sure that your, your uh, you know, for, for the low band one, your your PA bias max is 128. Um, but there was nothing else I could see that, you know, was causing a problem. So, uh, yeah, if you have one of these and it was working, putting up power, then all of a sudden it's not. It's likely that you blew the finals, um, but it's not a big deal. I mean, this 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 fix cost me, you know, I don't know. I think it was I think ten dollars for six of these plus shipping and, and taxes and all that stuff. So, yeah, uh, recommend that you know even if you're not super skilled at this kind of thing, I definitely am not. Um, this is something you can do. You can fix this um, if you made the same mistake I did, which is hook it up to an antenna you probably shouldn't have <laughs> without a tuner, and blew the finals because you were super excited to get this on the air. But now, I'm putting out actually more power than it needs to, which is great. Um, I just need to tune those 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 windings and we'll be um, in the clear. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. I'm going to have a video probably here soon on how to use these with uh, digital mode on FT8CN on that app. But there are already some other great videos out there on that, so maybe I'll just do a, a, a photo activation video or something like that and go through this little kind of quote-unquote go kit for traveling. That weighs probably a pound, I think. Uh, but yeah, that's it. It's, uh, 73s, and I hope to uh, see you guys in the air. Thanks.